Hello guys, once again, today we're going to take a look at Raiders, try to give you guys a guide on how to use Raiders and stuff, how to operate them and how to read them correctly. So the first thing you have to do always is to actually uh, set the keys, the buttons. Uh, so I normally use these keys if you want to, to copy me, but yeah, uh, you have to have a, a button to, to turn on and off the Raider. I use the numpad a lot on Raider, so the number zero, uh, to switch between Raider and the IRST, especially on the MiG-23, the IRST being the infrared search and track, I'm going to talk about it a little bit later. Uh, to change the Raider mode, this is going to change, for example, from the normal search mode for the pulse Doppler, which I'm going to uh, talk about it a little bit later. Uh, the number 4 of the numpad or the Z key I used for the beyond or vi within visual range combat so to change to one to another from one to another so the within visual range is the the kind of dogfight mode that the phantoms have and the beyond visual range is the normal one uh, the search mode basically it's the where the antenna is going to be looking so we have not a lot of options right now with this old aircraft but it's the it's going to be upwards or downwards in some aircraft or having a narrow uh, pattern or a, a wide pattern of searching uh, so it depends a lot on on everything okay it depends on the aircraft i mean and the scope scale, I use number 3, of course this is self-explanatory, This the scale of how many kilometers or miles the radar is going to show where it's detecting. Uh, the target, uh, the select target lock, so I use the left, the, the wheel uh, button of the mouse, so that I can actually select the target that I want to fire the missile, and the locked the lock button that I use space so yeah let's see now some of the the interface that we have in radars in War Thunder so here we have the PPI scale which stands for plan position indicator which is a top-down view basically of the of the radar scale the radar scope so we have a range as you see 30 kilometers max range at this altitude uh, the scan zone, so 60, degree by, 60 degrees by 9, 15 kilometer range, as you see, each line of that is a range, so if you look at the top line, curved line, it's 30 kilometers, because down there it says it's 30 kilometers the range, so up there it's 30 kilometers, and the middle 15, on the bottom it's zero. Between of those lines it's 7 kilometers, for example, or... or 22.5 on the other ones so basically just a distance scale and on the top of the radar you have the mode that you're using so for other modes you're going to end up seeing other stuff but anyway uh, here we have a target on a radar as you can see on this line that is showing on the it's the line that goes to the right and the left and the right and the left uh, this is a uh, this is the where the radar is searching for the target uh, and we see that we have a point in the middle that it's a square with two brackets on the sides uh, the point in the middle is a target and the brackets on the on each side are the things that are telling the pilot that it's the target that is selected okay here we have the ground clutter as you see, uh, there is an indicator and four bars. So the more bars it have, the more ground clutter it has. And take a look on the middle of the radar as well. Uh, you see there is a lot of stains, <laughs> if you want to call it that, on the radar, which are the radar, uh, the radiation bouncing from the ground back to the radar and showing on the screen. Here we can see uh, when you lock the target, first of all, at the top of the screen, you see the tracking uh, mode of the radar. So it changed it all by itself. Now it shows not search, but tracking. Uh, the green uh, 
triangle you can say it's the limits of the radar so if you make the target go past those limits to the right or to the left you, you're going to probably lose the lock and we have two lines curved lines because this is the ppi but i'm going to show everything on the b scale as well which is another top down uh, we have the minimal range and the optimal range so uh, launch range of the missile that you're using so basically just the energy the missile the distance that the missile will have the optimal ranging capabilities of hitting the target okay and if you change it here you have the B scope which is a top-down view as well uh, but the information is a little bit easier to follow and read so we have the same information as before the range so as you can see on the bottom we have the zero kilometers now showing that the bottom line is the zero and the and on the top of the screen the top line we have 30 kilometers which is the this max range of this time okay uh, we have still the mode the search mode while it's going to change it by itself when you try to lock a target or when you have a MTI or PD which I'm going to talk about later and this scan zone we also have these minus 52 and plus 52 degrees which are the max uh, deviation that the radar can uh, see on the left and on the right on this case some radars are more some radars are less and here we have the when you lock a target you get this square around the, the target itself uh, you can actually use the, the scale of the range uh, to know the target's distance using this mode uh, as well as the, the square that I'm going to show you to later but yeah it's kind of almost at seven kilometers as you can see locked and on the right side we have the missile ranges as i said before in war thunder we have the optimal ranges and stuff uh, as you see the 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 bottom line on the missile ranges is the minimum range launch range for the missile that you're using uh, the other uh, middle sized uh, bar is for the optimal range and the large one the the, the two times size the, the, the other ones is the max range of the missiles uh, so always check this before launching the missile um, but also check the video that I made on the missile ranges and stuff and on the top we have tracking again uh, on the mode as you see here we have also the ground clutter indicator and on the radar scope you have the ground clutter as well as the normal PPI mode and if you see these two bars on top of each other, uh, one larger one and one a little bit less thick than the other one, this is the IFF of the of the aircraft telling you that it's a, a friendly aircraft, so don't shoot it. Uh, you probably won't be able to lock it up, but still, um, just for you to guy to know how the IFF works in War Thunder. So also here we have an aircraft that is not, uh, two aircraft that there are not friendlies, so one of them is selected for you to lock and the other one is not. If you click the button to change the, to select the target, it's going to change from one to another, to the other. And here we have another type of scope that we have, it's the C scope. So just it's another one normally used in aircraft that have two radars or a radar for searching and a radar for tracking like the F3D and the MiG-19 I think it has or another aircraft to have this uh, it's just basically the same as the B1 but it's a vertical scan so you're looking from the f horizontally you know so from the front to the target as you see it's scanning and when you lock you still have the signal that it's still searching for other aircraft in the mode section it says tracking and searching because it has two radars okay so it's search while tracking and here we have the last one it's a B I'm using the B scope but it's the gun sight 
so it has the range and stuff and it's always in acquirement the mode acquire uh, so it auto locks when it gets to the range and doesn't have ground clutter uh, basically just gives you information inside the cockpit to shoot at the enemy so you can use the inside uh, gun inside the HUD to actually have a, a lead on the bullet drop but it doesn't it's just a bullet drop it's not uh, a, like uh, a lead indicator you know it's just a bullet drop and as you probably know when you lock somebody you have this square around the the target and we have three informations that we can take from this so the range to the target uh, the velocity to you so even if it's approaching or getting away from you it basically it's just saying how much speed it has compared to you so it's approaching you at 81 meters per second in this uh, in this example or getting away from you at uh, 81 meters per second how do you know if it's getting away or approach appro approaching you you're going to see the indicator on the bottom of the square so the heading indicator it has a little circle and a little stick popping out of it so every time you take a look at that you have to think about the target in a top-down view the circle is the target and the stick is the heading compared to you so basically the idea is if it's zero degrees like pointing upwards it's it means that you're going straight to the target if it's going completely downwards it means that the target is coming to you if it's going left or right it's going left or right so the thing is you can actually use this to intercept targets you can as I'm showing in this clip you can actually use the little uh, stick that is popping out to try to maintain the stick to the upwards position making sure that you're going straight to the target and giving the missile the best uh, possible launch uh, that you can give it so yeah i hope you guys understand it it's a little bit hard on concept but it's really easy when you see it working in game and as you see on this uh, photo you have two circles uh, i'm going to show a clip on how to use them uh, when you lock the target and select a missile and click the launch button, you're going to have two circles. The first circle, the inner circle, is going to just to show where the target is, basically. It's going to turn gray or red. If it's gray, don't shoot. You don't have the launch authorization of the aircraft. And then you have the second circle, the larger one, the outside one, uh, which basically tells you how much signal the radar have on the target to actually track the target so try to at least have 50% of the the signal which will turn the, the all the, the both circles red and then you can fire the missile as you're seeing in this clip so don't shoot the missile before you have the the launch authorized uh, from the the aircraft which is the red circle okay then you fire the missile and just wait for it to hit the target especially the search mode every single radar have it uh, so yeah basically the main uh, modes that we have is the search mode the tracking mode and the acquire mode so the search mode it's just a normal mode that the radar is going to fire the radiation and it's going to get back and the radar and it detects the target the tracking mode, uh, it doesn't scan. It's using, I mean, the search, you're searching. And the tracking, you're tracking one target. So it stops searching most of the radars. If you have only one radar for now, because we don't have track while search radars that w can do that with one radar, like the MiG-29 and the F-15, for example. Um, so yeah, when you're tracking, it's using all the radiation of the antenna to track one target. Okay. And the acquire is a special mode that some aircraft have. Uh, this can also be confused with the the lock, the, the simple lock button that some aircraft have, 
like the MiG-21, uh, you don't have the acquire mode, but if you click to lock a target, it goes to acquire and unlocks the target. So basically the acquire is trying to get from search to uh, to tracking. Uh, basically, normally the, the F4 has a, a mode that it's just keep blinking the acquire mode for you to use on dogfights and stuff to get a, a quick lock. So yeah, basically these are the three main modes that we have okay and we also have the MTI the pulse doppler the look down mode of the radar of the MiG-23 we have the low, the low altitude search mode of the MiG-23 basically the MiG-23 has a very very unique radar uh, but we are going to talk about it in another video because this video is already too long uh, it's so much stuff to talk about. Radars are very, very complex to explain. So you need a lot of time. So yeah, this week, keep an eye out. So subscribe. I'm going to make a video especially on uh, these unique radars, like the radars that use the pulse Doppler and the radars uh, and the MiG-23 radar, which is probably the most unique radar in game right now. It has four modes. It's fucking crazy uh, but yeah so subscribe if you want to see more and make sure to keep an eye out uh, Tuesday uh, as we are going to see the pulse Doppler radar and the MTI and MiG-23 radar video okay so see you guys on the next one bye